know yet. Today is all about costing systems. Next week will be all about variance analyses. But today is all about costing systems. We started on it uh, last week when we talked a little bit about some, you know, some basic definitions of cost, which I will probably repeat. Um, I'm pretty sure today will, will be a lot of new stuff for you. I'm not going to go through again what we did last week, but I believe you guys can see that. We finished off, we were talking about, you know, controllable versus non-controllable, uncontrollable costs, opportunity, and sunk costs. We finished up talking about product costs. Product costs and period costs. And I let, let off there because what we're about to talk about leads right into costing systems. These are some definitions that might be new to you. Some definitions. A cost pool, a cost driver, and a cost object. Cost pools are some meaningful grouping of costs that you might want to understand um, how much costs are in a certain area. Um, you could think of it as a department. A manufacturing department might be a cost pool. You want to pool, pool your costs in that department to understand how much a cost they are accumulating. A cost driver, which is very important in terms of allocating overhead is any factor that has the effect of changing a level of total costs. And then a cost object is kind of the end game. Generally speaking, when you think about cost objects, you think about products. How much does it cost to develop a product? Uh, and for a service organization, it could be a service. And we'll talk about, hopefully later today, pooling it by customers so that you could figure out how much does it cost to service a specific customer. Um, so it's where you really want to kind of manage at the aggregate level would be a cost object. Okay, I think we... Well, when you think about costs, and we talked about direct and indirect costs previously, Direct costs can be easily traced to a cost pool or a cost object. Direct materials, you know where they're going. And so you can trace them easily. Indirect costs cannot be traced easily. You know, the, the, the cost of electricity in a building. Um, and they, in some fashion, have to be allocated to your objects. And the means upon which you do that allocation is called your allocation basis. And you use cost drivers as your allocation basis. And we will get through that today. Some examples of cost objects and drivers. Machine operation setup, production schedule, et cetera. So if you want to um, understand how much it costs for machine operations, you may look at machine hours. How many hours has that machine been up and running? Set up is how long it took you to set up a batch or set up a run. Um, inspection could be driven by the number of pieces that you're inspecting. Um, and you can see all of these. We don't need to go through all of them. So a cost driver is some kind of quantifiable measure of your cost object. And here's a nice, simple picture. So if you're a, ultimately you're a company that's making dishwashers and washing machines, you have various costs. You pool them into two departments, assembly and packing. So these would be your cost pools. These would be your cost objects. 
and then you'd have some kind of driver to figure out how much would go into each pool and ultimately into each object. And we'll have see plenty of examples of this in the next couple of chapters to understand this better. But it shows how you're able to take these costs and associate them with some kind of an object, normally thought of as a product, but not always. Um, I, I won't go through this, but here's a different view from, from a cost. This is for a medical insurer. You pull those costs, and then you have your objects, which are various um, delivery lines for that insurer. And examples of drivers are numbers of people, square footage as it relates to facilities, um, hours worked, et cetera. So cost drivers provide two functions. They allow you to do this cost assignment. And they help you to understand cost behavior. So if you increase the number of um, direct labor hours, if that's your driver, what, will that ha what effect would that have on your total cost? And there are four kinds of cost drivers. I don't really like these which I'm just going to go right past. And there are different kinds of businesses out there. Duh. And in fact, as I assign the companies, I try to assign companies that have different kinds of, uh, of, of, of business functions. The first would be a job shop. A job shop is defined by having a relatively low volume of output that is not standardized, and each product is unique. At one end of the spectrum would be Disney. They produce films. Each film, and there aren't, they don't produce that many, each film is unique, is different. There are costs associated with, with that film, developing that film. So you associate those costs directly to that job. That's one end of the spectrum, and we'll talk about those in detail in very, very shortly, the next chapter. Um, stepping down, the next is a batch job, and the example we use is Caterpillar, where they have multiple products. It's still low value. They make big, big trucks or, or, or factory equipment um, or, or construction equipment. They have lots of different products, but each product is unique for the purpose at hand. They're, they're very good at um, making products that are very unique for the construction business. So it's relatively low volume with lots of different products, and they produce them in batch. So they're not going to just make one of a certain type, and they make 50, but only 50. Then there's the assembly line approach, which would be like Ford, just you know, churn out the cars. So they have a, a few major products at a relatively high volume. Then mass customization, Dell would be an example of that, where they, you know, they, they, everyone has a slight little twist on the computer that they order. You know, some, you know, they have a standard computer that they hope you order since they have those ready, but everyone wants something a little bit different, so they, they mix and match the parts they put together to create your, your, specific, um, your specific computer. And then there's continuous flow process costing is what we call that here, chapter six. And this is high volume, standardized commodity type products. And Exxon would be an example of that. And other oil and gas companies, or chemical companies as well. So it's the two, these would be the two extremes that we'll, we'll learn about. And in here, the hybrids of those extremes. And the way that you do cost management is different between these two extremes, which is why we show this. OK, so um, some qualitative um, considerations. So 
goes without saying, accuracy. So as you consider your internal cost information, you want to be accurate. Very important, everything you do in business has a cost benefit. We'll talk about activity-based costing, hopefully today. It's a great way to do this costing, but it comes with a fairly high cost itself. And so is it worth that cost to do activity-based costing in your business or not? And then timeliness. The more detailed, the more exact, the longer it takes. And so you need to think about these issues as you're doing your costing to, to ensure that you're doing things um, in the appropriate way for your company. Okay? Ten minutes in.